بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد قال الإمام الحافظ أبو عيسى الترمذي رحمه الله تعالى في أبواب الحج عن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم باب ما جاء في حرمة مكة حدثنا قتيبة قال حدثنا الليث بن سعد عن سعيد بن أبي سعيد المقبري عن أبي شريه العدوي أنه قال لعمر بن صعيد ويبعث البعوث إلى مكة إذن لي أيها الأمير أحدثك قولا قام به رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم الغد من يوم الفتح سمعته أذناي ووعاه قلبي وأبصرته عيناي حين تكلم به أنه حمد الله وأثنى عليه ثم قال إن مكة حرمها الله ولم يحرمها الناس ولا يحم ولا يحل لامرئ يؤمن بالله واليوم الاخر ان يسفك فيها دما او يعضد بها شجرة فان احد ترخص بقتال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم فيها فقول له ان الله اذن لرسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم ولم ياذن لك وانما اذن لي فيه ساعة من النهار وقد عادت حرمتها اليوم كحرمتها بالامس وليبلغ الشاهد الغائب فقيل لأبي شريح ما قال لك عمر قال أنا أعلم منك بذلك يا أبا شريح أن الحرم لا يعيد عاسيا ولا ثارا بدم ولا ثارا بخربة قال أبو عيسى ويروى ولا ثارا بحزبة قال في الباب عن أبي هريرة وابن عباس أو بخزية ولا ثارا بخزية قال في الباب عن أبي هريرة وابن عباس قال أبو عيسى حديث أبي شريح حديث حسن صحيح وأبو شريح الخزاعي اسمه خويرد بن عمر وهو العدوي وهو الكعبي ومعنى قوله ولا فارا بخربة يعني بالجناية أو الجناية يقول من جنى جناية أو أصاب دما ثم لجأ إلى الحرم فإنه يقام عليه الحد It says here in the chapter of Hajj from the Jami of Imam Tirmidhi رحمه الله تعالى the first chapter is the sacredness of Mecca. How the city of Mecca is sacred. It's not like an average city. It isn't like a normal city. It isn't to be looked down upon or discarded. And this is very important for those brothers who plan to make Hajj. And it symbolizes that Mecca is connected to Hajj and Hajj is connected to Mecca. And that is to symbolize that the Hajj is supposed to be sacred. Take it serious. It's not a joke. And your normal things or the normal behavior or the things that you may normally do on a daily basis, one should try his or her best to avoid them on Hajj, especially in Mecca. So it's symbolic. Mecca is sacred. Hajj is sacred. Time is sacred. The money that you spent and you saved up and the sacrifice that you make away from your family should also be sacred. So try your best to take advantage of that. So he says, what is mentioned regarding Mecca being totally haram, off limits, with regards to fighting, killing, sinning, and the list goes on. It's hadith number 809. Al-Tirmidhi, he says, hadithna Qutayba. He says that Qutayba ibn Sa'id, our sheikh, he told us, qala hadithna Layth ibn Sa'id, from a man whose name was Layth ibn Sa'id. An Sa'id ibn Abi Sa'id ibn al-Maqburi. The third narrator is Sa'id, the son of Sa'id, al of Ibn Sa'id al-Maqbari, who reported from Abu Shuraih al-Adwi. Abu Shuraih al-Adwi. Uh, and he said to another man whose name was Amr ibn Sa'id. And this man, Amr ibn Sa'id, he was sending, he says, وَيَبْعَثُ الْبُعُوثَ إِلَى مَكَّةَ He was sending armies to Mecca. He was preparing an army, a group of men, to take a stance in Mecca. So Abu Shuraih... Uh, he says, أَيُّهَا الْأَمِيرِ He says, O oh, leader, O oh, general, please listen to me for one second. Lend your ear for one brief second, please. أُحَدِّثُكَ أَوْ أُحَدِّثْكَ قَوْلًا قَامَ بِهِ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ الْغَدَ مِنْ يَوْمِ الْفَتْحِ He says, let me tell you something that the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said. He said it in a speech, in a sermon, a khutbah, after the day of the conquest of Mecca. After the conquest of Mecca. He says, سَمِعَتُ أُذُنَيَا وَوَعَاهُ قَلْبِي وَأَبْصَرَتُهُ عَيْنَيَا حِينَ تَكَلَّمَ بِهِ He says, and there's no doubt that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said this. Uh, he says, my ears heard it, my heart has retained it, 
and my eyes have observed it. The Prophet ﷺ, he said this. Uh, he began his khutbah by praising Allah, and alhamdulillah, by mentioning Allah's beauty, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he said, Inna Makata haramaha Allah. He says, Mecca, this city, is unlawful and is sacred. Walam yuharrim nas and is made sacred by Allah and no one else. There is no sanctuary that was made by a man or a human being. But Allah Azzawajal, He Himself, He made Mecca unlawful and sacred. And it's unlawful for any Muslim to spill the blood of someone in Mecca or to cut down a tree to disturb the natural way that Mecca was created and to commit bloodshed. That's unlawful. And if someone says that the Messenger of Allah, he fought in Mecca. Talking about the actual battle, the conquest of Mecca, Fatu Mecca. Was Fatu Mecca a peaceful solution? Did the Mushrikun lay down their arms and give him the key to the city peacefully? Or was there actual fighting? The ulama of Islam, they differ on this when it comes to Sira. Sira. The battle of Badr was actual battle. Was a fight. Uhud, there was a fight. Okay? The conquest of Mecca, did they actually fight? Or was there an agreement? Some say that the Prophet and the Sahaba actually fought. Huh? They said they actually fought. So this hadith, it says, If someone tries to take what the Prophet and the did, then tell them Allah allowed his messenger to do this. And he didn't allow anyone else to do it. And he only gave me a short period of time to do it. A short concession to make some type of violence here in Mecca. And now he says, وَقَدْ عَادَتْ حُرْمَتُهَا الْيَوْمَ كُهُرْمَتِهَا بِرَمْسِ he says that Mecca is now back to its original state of sacredness. That was only a short period of time. That's done. Class. Then it goes back to its original state of sacredness. And the Prophet me ended his speech by saying, And let those who are here tell those who aren't here. He said, Let those who are listening convey to those who, get, who didn't hear it. Pass on the knowledge. Convey, convey the knowledge. Don't hide the knowledge. You hear it from me, now do what? Tell other individuals. He then says, so uh, it was said to Abu Shuraih radiallahu anhu, ma qala laka amrun. He says, what did Amr say back to you? What was his response when you told him, don't send the armies to go fight in Mecca? What did he respond? Or how did he respond to you? It says, an alamu minka bidhalika ya Abu Shuraih. He says, I know this better than you do. Jazakallah khairan for the advice. I know of this more than you do. The hadith that you're trying to use and gave me not to send my armies there. It says that indeed Mecca is sacred. However, Mecca is not a safe grounds for a criminal. Okay? For a murderer. Someone that's on the run. He can just go to Mecca and say, Kalas, I'm safe here. Don't seize me. Don't take the punishment. Huh? La. He says Mecca is sacred. It's unlawful. Except in this instance. If there's a criminal... He cannot just go run in Mecca and hide in Mecca. Huh? Tayyib. Uh, at tirmidhi rahimahullah ta'ala, he then explains a couple of pieces of vocabulary from the hadith. And he says that the hadith of Abu Shuraih radiallahu anhu is authentic. And Abu Shuraih is al-Khuza'i. Uh, his clan, his tribe, his lineage. And his name is Khuwaylid ibn Amr. That's his actual name, Khuwaylid. The son of Amr. Abu Shuraih was his kunya. Abu Fulan, the father of Fulan, Um Fulan. That was his kunya. Tayyib. And he is also al-Adwi and al-Ka'bi. Tayyib. And he says, and this hadith means, وَلَا ثَارًا بِخَرْبَةٍ It says, if there's a criminal, someone on the run, someone who took someone's wealth or who murdered someone or raped someone or hijacked someone, he is not safe in Mecca. And the Muslims have the ability to take him and seize him even if he hides where? In Mecca. And if that's not the case, then Mecca is totally sacred. Mecca is totally sacred. So this is a beautiful hadith, and it teaches us and it shows us many, many, many things. And from the things that it shows us, first and foremost, is Mecca is sacred, like we just said. And it also shows us how the pious predecessors from the Sahaba and the Salaf, uh, they didn't always just submit to the first thing that they heard. Rather, they used their minds. And they knew that the hadiths had understandings and interpretations. I hear what you say. But it doesn't mean that we can just let someone get away just because they go to Mecca. 
It doesn't mean that someone can say, well, we're brothers, so therefore you can't get upset. You can't lie. We're brothers, and you also owe me money. Everyone understand this? I'm your brother, and you also what? You owe me money. The one who said that the Muslims are brothers uh, is the same one who said that the Muslims are to pay each other back what they owe. Everyone understand this? There's, there's a right. You can't just abuse Islam. As many people, they try to, try to abuse Islam. Someone comes into the masjid, says, I'm in the masjid. Don't say nothing. Don't lie. No. The masjid is sacred, and you also owe me money that's sacred. So there's a balance. There's this, and then there's what? And then there's that. Everyone clear on this or not? And it goes to show us the virtue of Mecca, and how special Mecca is. And this is something that the haji should always keep in mind. But then it's out when someone pushes you, or steps on your foot, or uh, there was one time I was making tawaf, when well, there's no exaggeration. Okay, I had young children and my wife with me at the time. And I accidentally stepped on somebody. It was very crowded and I stepped on somebody. I turned around and apologized to the man and literally he put up his middle finger in the Masjid al-Haram. Wallah al I swear to you not. He put up his middle finger like this. So these things can happen. So never ever forget that Mecca is sacred. And your ego or someone pushing you or stepping on you or spitting on you or stealing your shoes or whatever happens isn't worth you violating this. It isn't worth it. It's not worth it. Just let it go, be the bigger person, and perhaps be the next time you'll get the reward for stifling yourself and your anger and your ego. Because we all get upset. Someone steps on us, someone looks at us funny. What you looking at? Someone pushes you, someone bumps you. That's nature. Okay? They don't even say, excuse me. They just kick you and move you out the way or spill something on you. But you have to be patient, especially at Mecca. And this hadith, it also shows us seizing criminals. Seizing criminals and seeking justice. And not allowing religion to ever come in front of religion. Because this being sacred is deen, and taking this criminal is also deen, as we just said. And many of us, we abuse Islam. You rent from someone, the brother, he's a Muslim, he's your landlord, Tayyip, you pay rent. When something is broken, something needs to be fixed, he doesn't fulfill his contractual agreements, the first thing he says, Akhi, we're brothers, relax. We are brothers, so why do you treat me like this? I'm staying in this house with my wife and children and the roof is leaking on me. There's no heat. There's no electricity. So if we're truly brothers, how can you let me live like this? And I guarantee if I went to your house, I don't think the, le the roof will be leaking. I don't think your wife and children will be wearing coats at nighttime because the heater is broke. I don't think there'll be any shortcomings in your house. So this is something that we have to get out of. You buy a car from a brother, it's a contract, and then it turns into Islam. Uh, from Islam is a contract. From Islam is paying your money. It's respecting what you owe. That's, that's a part of Islam as well. So we can't just take one part of the deen and do what? Neglect other parts of the religion. And this is very, very widespread. Am I making this up? How many bad experiences, unfortunately, you had when you're doing business with a Muslim? It's sad. It's very sad. On both sides. huh? The tenant or the landlord. And last but not least, this hadith shows us uh, to, among many other fawaid, is to spread knowledge. Pass on ilm. You hear something, give it to someone else. Pass it on to someone else. Be the next panel. And Allah Azza wa Jalla surely knows best.